What's up, everybody? It's Friday. It's a freehand Friday. It's snowing again on a Friday. I'm smoking my Calabresi today, which <clears throat> getting a replacement stem in for this uh, freehand stem to make it a little more honest. Someone put a replacement stem on this. I know I've said it before. It's just a hunk of acrylic. So, the one I'm getting in is straight. And uh, I'm going to see... I, I remember seeing a video somewhere about bending them. I'm not even sure if that's possible. I'm going to try. Make it, uh, make it a little bend. In this freehand, I'm smoking some Galwith Hogarth Louisiana Flake. I think it's Louisiana Flake. It's either Louisiana Preak Flake or Louisiana Flake. I'm pretty sure it's Louisiana Flake. Which is awesome. And I'm going to do a review about it soon because it's it's a tasty deal. Um, it's got a little bit of Lakeland stuff in it, so if you're not really into Lakeland, this doesn't knock you over the head. But anyway, just a little preview. It's kind of graham crackerish, which is interesting. But with spice. But I'm getting off topic. Why I'm talking to you today is because uh, Chad Yarborough of Yardism, uh, if you're not sub to Chad, uh, or otherwise, Yardism, uh, go check him out. He's got some awesome stuff. Dude knows his music like no one's business. So I, I really dig when he talks about music and stuff. And he does a lot of uh, live things on, on Instagram. And, you know, I, I enjoy talking back and forth with Chad. He's a great dude. Great, great dude. He puts a lot of content out there. So if you're not sub to Chad Yardism, Chad Yarbrough, uh, go give him a sub. Right now he's doing a little series. Let's see if I can keep this pipe going. I'm getting a little gurgle, which makes me unhappy. Uh, he's doing a little series right now uh, based off a book um, I think it was by Tim Ferriss. Don't quote me on that. I'm going off of memory here. I didn't make any notes today. Uh, and it's about a guy who's, uh, Tim Ferriss wrote this book about mentoring and he went around and asked a lot of different people the same 11 questions. So he's breaking it down, down by question. Each video is a question. So, uh, by day. So day one, he explains it. Day two was the one I wanted to talk about because I really thought I had something to contribute there, um, personally. Day number two, the question is, name a purchase that you've made for less than $100 that possibly, uh, possibly influenced your life. And, you know, I've seen a bunch of the responses so far, so I'm not going to repeat what anybody said. Um, popular one is, is the Bible. The, the Bible positively influenced me way before I had money to purchase anything. So, anyway. I'm going to fast forward uh, to when I was around 10 or 11, uh, I started my paper and um, started putting a little money in my pocket and I'd buy my comic books and stuff like that and, uh, and, and music. I was always into music and I always wanted to be a musician. My father was a guitarist, he was in bands back in like the Woodstock era. So I always wanted to play but I was a horrible student as a kid, still a bad student. I'm good at teaching myself things, which is where I'm going with this. So, during the time of that paper, I already had a walk-in, but with some of the money that I saved up early on, I went out and bought myself the Sony Walkman Sports Edition, which was this yellow hunk of plastic, but it, it had a little clasp and it had the first like in-ear headphones, so I was psyched about that. Now kids, if you're not familiar with cassettes, they look kind of like this. And you'd make mixtapes and stuff like that, either cassette to cassette, or eventually when CDs came around, you'd dub it to a, to a tape. So, I'd ride around on my bike, delivering my newspapers, listening to music. And um, there were a lot of times where I'd listen to the same album on loop, over and over and over again. And I think that's responsible for me learning how to play music by ear, which is eventually how I taught myself. I'd play along to the tapes or CDs. Eventually when I got CDs, my first CD was uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Sky Is Crying. So, um, us old fellas would remember that 
when that came out. And um, but I'd, I'd ride around on my bike and listen to music repeatedly. So um, like Pink Floyd, The Wall was in that uh, in that tape player for probably six months. Steve Vai, uh, a lot of Van Halen. I was huge into Van Halen back then. And when I when I turned twelve, I took some more of that paper money and bought myself a guitar. Um, but that that Sony Walkman was like my music teacher because I jammed so much into my head listening to that music over and over and over again. I'd listen to you know the drums for a while and try and figure out what they're doing with that and listen to the bass and how that works with the guitars and how you know two different guitars can work together and create harmonies and vocal harmonies and all that stuff. There was a lot of stuff back then that I was listening to um, in a, a broad broad spectrum of music um, a lot of progressive rock but also a lot of rock a lot of blues and stuff like that to where when I got my guitar I was already kind of ready to go with it um, and eventually after playing my ear for for years and years I, I got to a point where I could just listen to a song and have a good idea of, of how it was gonna work on guitar um, but that walking that walking was huge um, and I, I probably wouldn't have been playing in bands when I was 15 to when I was 30 if it weren't for that walking. So, Chad, that's my answer. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Um, give Chad a little visit. And if you're on Instagram, go check him out on that because he does a lot of stuff on Instagram. Heck of a channel. Heck of a guy. Um, folks, Scotty P. In the snow. Saying, if you have a free hand, smoke them. And salute.